find us on the uh, outskirts of Cardiff. Uh, we're a couple of minutes away from our drop, that's all. Stopped here last night and uh, got a five o'clock tip this morning, so it's uh, 20 to five now. Oh, really, boy's got no patience at all, look. Um, but I think from what, I, what, what the gaffer said last night, uh, I may have a bit of an interesting trip from here because I've got to tip this and then go up to one of our customers up at Merthyr and then wait for the trailer and he said head down to the boat to Portsmouth which but I don't know where from Portsmouth so um, you'll find out when I find out basically so stay tuned let's get this load off and uh, see what we're doing next, eh? Well, that's a good start to the day. Um, booked in at five o'clock. So set off at uh, 25 to, I was literally five minutes away. Got there 22, obviously five minutes. And uh, security says, oh no, you can't come in yet. Uh, you need to come back in 20 minutes yeah but I'm booked in in 20 minutes so I should be on a bay in 20 minutes no no come back in 20 minutes and I'll book you in with the rest of your colleagues so there's going to be a boatload of us turn up at 5 o'clock that she's then got to process so I said can I just park on site here till you open the gate massive site loads of room no, 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 you can't park here. Leave site and uh, go park just up the road. There's a big white space, you can go park there. Uh, thanks very much. Very helpful. So we're gonna park here. For 20 minutes. For no reason at all, really. Right, Dio! We've tipped that one in Cardiff, got the paperwork back, and uh, gone out past the miserable security guard ever. Well, I've done my shopping, and uh, they said the trailer's going to be ready in probably in about half an hour. Uh, just seen the shunter there, and he said, back in. But there's there's another there's another YouTuber there. Look, it's only Jenko, the famous Jenko McJenkins. There he is. Right. Well, that was handy. The vets uh, that I need to seal my trailer. In four miles. We're just Take about to set off for lunch. After uh, after sorting Jenko's trailer, and I said if I check. How long mine's going to be? Do you mind hanging on and sorting mine for me? And he said, yeah, no problem. Nice bloke from Spain, had a bit of a chat with him. Uh, so he hung on, fair play, must have taken another 10 minutes. But um, he hung on, sealed the trailer, which has saved me waiting half an hour for him to have his dinner. And um, we're, on my, we're on our way. So I've got a hundred and, uh, just over 160 miles to go down to the ferry at Portsmouth. sales at 11 o'clock tonight so my plan is to get there I need fuel for uh, the truck and the trailer on the way but I've got that planned which is probably when I'll catch up with you next unless there's something interesting to see so stay tuned Right folks, as predicted, uh, the next stop was indeed Sutton Scotney Services, where I've topped up with fuel and add blue, so I've now got a range of 1,500 miles of fuel and 1,800 miles of add blue. Um, and in 
fairness, 1,500 miles should actually get me to my destination. Of course, there may not be a fuel station near, so I may have to top up before, but I've got at least two days good running in there without fueling. And given that um, I'll see the rest of today out and get down to the ferry, and I'll see tomorrow out, which is a Friday, and the day after, which is a Saturday. Uh, then I start my weekly rest anyway. So, uh, can sort some fuel out then. Um, quite a good journey down, really. Last few miles have been a bit foggy, as you can see now. It did actually become a bit worse than this, but uh, nothing too bad. Um, it does say there's a 30 minute delay on the road in front of me, which is only to be expected. It's 20 past five of an evening, heading into uh, towards Southampton and then branching off to Portsmouth. So today delays are unfortunate. Inevitable. Oh, matey boy's got his fog light on there, look, that's handy. Keep your fog light on, don't you, mate? Your invisibility's down to what? A mile? Maybe more. Anyway. Oh, look, that screen needs to clean, doesn't it? Sorry about that, I didn't realise it was so bad. Add a bit of a wash for you. And then you'll be able to see a bit better. Next will probably be the um, approach to Portsmouth. Uh, I'll see if I can show you what's going on with that. Otherwise, come in a bit. Uh, otherwise, yeah, we're uh, heading for the boat. Here we are coming into Portsmouth. Off the motorway. Pretty straightforward. Follow the. Uh, Follow the road round and it takes you to the ferry port. As you can see, uh, once you get round here, it starts to get a bit more sensible. Turn left onto Rathmore Road, As then take see, the first it's right. Very dormly. Turn right onto Wharf Road. Follow it around to the right and up to the check ins. Arriving at Portsmouth Ferry. I'm on this side and then on the right side for my passport man. a bit, let him get sorted and then we'll go on and get done. Uh, we'll pull forward then into the lanes and park up. Well we've sorted out our, uh, we had a little booking issue, we've sorted that out um, and we're just starting to load now. Uh, it's quite late actually, should have sailed 20 minutes since and there's a huge queue behind me still Waiting to load. And there we are on board. Catch you in the morning. Good morning, one and all. You find us disembarking. The Mont Saint Michel. <clears throat> I've had a message from um, Customs already saying that my status is orange, which was absolutely expected. So, our first job this morning is to go up to Sibep, which is just up the road. Uh, 
Uh, so yeah, just up the road to Sivep and uh, clear customs and the vets and other stuff from there. First of all, we'll have to go through. Uh, I'm sure they do passport control. Right, here we are. Uh, that's the uh, passport on the road. control done coming into France. Um, he says I just go straight up to Civet and get myself sorted up there, which, as I say, is what was, uh, what was expected. So let's whip up there and uh, hopefully get a quick getaway. Right, as you can see, that's us in Sivet. Um, unfortunately, not good news. For some reason, he knows already that it's going to be a long time. <laughs> so he said, uh, as usual, go around the building, back onto bay number one, initially with your doors closed, uh, but they will need to open it and do a physical inspection, and it will be some time. So, in his words, we need to start as soon as possible. Anyway, nothing we can do about that, so we'll stick it on a bay and uh, make a cup of tea or something. Well, three and a bit hours there to get the seal check and vets, customs, paperwork, everything else done. Which now puts us under a little bit of pressure to try and get to Castets. We'll have to have a really good run. Hopefully we will, but you never know. It is Friday afternoon. Once again, I am heading into Bordeaux. Once again. At the roundabout, take the fourth exit to D514. Anyway, let's see what we can do. Join me on the journey. really good um, that'll save me a break and I may 
even do it then, uh, if I can do it in one, one punch from my next stop, I may even do it in a 13 hour shift, uh, which will be good, but obviously we'll see how we go on. As we come over the top here, you can see TA in the distance. Let me see if I can just tap that and I'll zoom in a bit. There you go. Yeah, you can see Pati off in the distance there. Look, slightly overcast today, but temperature wise, it says 10 degrees. Uh, nothing much else to report. Like I say, just a, a clear run down so far. So yeah, fingers crossed we'll get into this next services and uh, and do it in one punch. I'll probably catch you up. I'm gonna have a bit of lunch here, so I'll probably catch you up next in a few hours down in Bordeaux. Um, and we'll see what the traffic likes around there because that's gonna be make or break, really. Yeah, catch you in a bit. Well, that's made it a little tricky. That uh, exit road there is the one I was going, the, the air I was going to stop in, um, but it's shut. So the next one is nine miles, and I've got maybe just enough time to make it. So I'll have to, uh, fingers crossed, and start praying, and hopefully we'll get in there. Dear, dear, dear. These things are said to try us. Well, we've made it to this nice air and uh, just cooked a bit of dinner. Mate, I was talking to my mate the other day, Captain Slow. Go, go give him a follow on Facebook if you're not already. And he was having some soup, and I thought, God, oh, blimey, I've, I've been craving soup ever since. So I've, I've uh, chopped up some little bits of cooked chicken, warmed that in the microwave made some chicken soup in, in this little plastic bowl that the chicken was in, and then tipped the chicken back into it. And I got some uh, I got some nice bread to dip in it. God, blame me, it's gorgeous. Anyway, I've uh, 214 miles to go to Castets. So with a good run through Bordeaux, <laughs> Friday evening, hopefully we'll get there in one it from here, which will be really good. But we'll see how we go on. Um, I think I'm still going to end up going over a 13 hour day, which I'm fine. I'm fine with anyway. I've got um, I've got a couple of 15, 15, 15s left uh, for today and tomorrow, and then that's me done for the week anyway. So we'll be fine. Catch you in a bit. Well, I said we'd catch up in Bordeaux, and here we are in Bordeaux. Um, I'm about three quarters of the way round, in fairness. Um, I didn't book on before, I, I didn't book on, I didn't um, video before because I was concentrating on what's what and the traffic and all the rest of it. But in fairness, it's been flowing really, really good. My sat nav even said there was um, 20, well, it started out as a nine, 90 minute delay. And I thought, oh, great, that's gonna mean I'm in one not, mile, not even going to make uh, 15 on the right, cast dead. But it dropped and dropped and dropped, and eventually it said 20 minutes. But even that hasn't materialised so far. It's um, I don't I don't think I've dropped below sort of 40 mile an hour, uh, and and stuck to the speed limit all the way through, nice and steady. But the traffic's been flowing all the time. Um, the entry roads have been okay, everybody's been sort of filtering in nicely. So yeah, we're coming off here, up onto the forest road and um, head out to Castet. Just 40 miles to go and coming up to the payage. Let's see if I can show you one of these um, 30k an hour ones. They're good when they work good, but you have to not be taking the mix and going at 50 kilometers per hour. But there you go, just a little bit on the retarder coming in and uh, drop it down to around 30. 
Thursday and up they go. Uh, yeah, 37 miles to go, uh, 36 on, on the motorway and then we literally just turn off the motorway and, um, and we're there so I don't know, three quarters of an hour I should be there, which is good. Um, grab a beer and uh, get something to eat and then nine off and kick off in the morning. Roundabout, take the third exit to D42. I go up to this roundabout and left, down a little uh, bit of a track, and then there's another roundabout that drops me straight into the back of the truck park. in there and I'm away from turn left on to Rudu San Routier then take the first away right over there, all nice and lit up, that'll do me for the night, park up, go get some grub, shower and maybe a beer, see you in the morning. Good morning, uh, this is us just leaving our little parking spot in Castet, which served us well. Lovely meal in the restaurant last night. Uh, met another British guy, had a bit of a chat with him. Uh, owner driver, nice fella. Didn't get his name, typical, typical Brit. Um, me, I mean, not him. Uh, yeah, lovely meal. And it's quarter to, uh, sorry, it's five to five. Turn right on to D42, then enter the roundabout. And we're going to uh, make some inroads into the 570 miles we've got to go to our destination. <clears throat> uh, either way, I'm going to get closer than I oh, expected. Sorry, this road's a bit rough, just throwing me about. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna get closer than I expected, so I should have, um, I was I was thinking I was gonna have like three hours left to run. Uh, on At the roundabout, on Sunday take evening. the second exit to D947. Um, but I, I may have less, I may have sort of two, two and a half, two and a quarter maybe. So yeah, we'll hopefully 
like I say, we're, we're going to do better than I expected, so that's good. Anyway, here you are, along for the ride. There's my lights, nice lights, good scan your lights. Um, yeah, we'll drop down onto the motorway, it's only two minutes back onto the motorway, and uh, from memory, there's a payage up ahead. At the roundabout, take the fourth exit to A63. And then we can crack on. because I may only do a nine hour shift instead of a 10 if I, if I don't need to because doing the 10 hour shift, obviously I need to put another three quarter of an hour break in, which means um, to gain an hour, it's costing me another hour. So I can do that other hour's drive tomorrow and save an hour's break today, if you see what I mean. Made that sounds slightly complicated, more complicated than it actually is. But um, anyway, it's just utilising my taco time better to, to, the, to the best. So yeah, there we are. Next stop, coffee. Right, monkey. Um, I'm not sure if it's this Repsol garage that I've been to before. I'll see when I when I pull out. But you go, where that car's going there, you go up, turn right as if you're going to drop back down onto the motorway. But you don't, you run along it on this little track for for a mile or so. It's, uh, you think, oh my God, I've gone wrong here. But you haven't. And it brings you out when you drop onto the motorway just a bit further on. But uh, anyway, um, I'm going to grab a coffee here. Made it. 
on four hours 28 minutes so beautiful good time in that um yeah as i say grab a coffee here and then we'll mooch on a bit further right that's the break over lovely coffee in there with a nice young lady there she is yeah i'm pretty sure this is the one i filled up um when i was on the motorsport job uh, and you, you come up here and then turn down this little track and you think oh my god This little track look. <laughs> it runs down alongside the motorway. It's only, a, it's only this, um, it's probably old old national road, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it runs down alongside the motorway look instead of, you think, oh my God, how long is this gonna walk for? <laughs> But it just goes, it just goes along here and then rejoins the motorway. Anyway, 330 miles to our destination. I won't, I won't do it today. Um, I've only got five and a half left on a 10 hour drive. Uh, but I'm gonna be close enough to do it in a couple of hours tomorrow at least. So that's really good. Um, it's booked in at 11 p.m. Just waiting for confirmation of that from the office in which case uh, I can start at sort of half eight nine o'clock depending on where I get to and um, run in get it tipped hopefully they'll have some instructions of what I'm doing next uh, and then obviously dependent on that if it's close I'll just book off I've nine off and load in the morning um, and if it's further away then I can run to it and load a bit later in the day uh, on Monday I've got a feeling it may be multiple collections uh, on the wine job being this time of year but you never know it may be a load of vegetables to go back up to Belgium which is what I'd really like because that's a proper good long run then uh, I'll have a fresh card having had my weekend rest um, so I'll be able to run up there and do whatever from there at the end of the street turn left yeah yeah so so we go on Outside Salamanca, we've 220 miles to go. Uh, I've two and a half hours left on this shift, so I should get another 100, 120 miles, leaving me um, just 100 to do with an hour's driving left. So I'll probably get 40, maybe if I'm lucky, 50 of that out the way. Might just end up with an hour to run on Sunday, which would be spot on. Uh, it, it was misty earlier on, not not really foggy, just uh, quite a heavy mist, but that's burnt itself off now and the sun's trying to come through. Uh, it's sort of bright, but a, a little bit hazy. Uh, it's just gone from three up to four degrees. So it's not really warm outside, but um, yeah, it's a nice dry day. Anyway, just thought I'd give you a bit of the update and uh, show you the show you the uh, countryside. Here we are then, 
entered in Portugal. Uh, I can't remember whether I've done a video before um, stopping at Villa Formosa. So I'm, I'm, I've done, I know I've done a video. I can't remember whether I've um, put it up or not. Uh, but thanks to uh, Sherilyn Ballard, who, if you're not following her, give her a follow on. Um, on YouTube, she put me on to uh, parking in Villa Formoso that was um, that was spot on. Uh, I, I'm sure I put the video up, but um, if I haven't, forgive me. But yeah, Villa Formoso is on the border. It's uh, it's on my left. You may see it as we drop down here. I can't remember whether you can see the truck stop, but it's a massive um, old border post. And uh, there's a decent restaurant there, and um, yeah, decent parking right opposite the police and the border post, so uh, it's, it's safe and secure. Anyway, as I say, we're in Portugal now. Uh, I've got an hour and 20 minutes left on this shift, and I'll probably call that it because to do my last hour. I'm going to have to wait 45 minutes. I'm going to have to do another. So at the end of this four and a half hour shift, I'll have to do a 45 minute break in order to do the next hour. Um, and I don't really need it. So if I don't do it, it means I can start an hour earlier after having my 24 off. And my boss has told me that the place I'm delivering to, though it's an 11 p.m. booking, they actually open at 5 p.m. So I'm probably going to leave myself two hours to run. To, uh, um, to, yeah, tomorrow evening. But I'll be able to start it an hour sooner. So rather than being an hour closer, I'll be two hours away, but I'll be able to start an hour sooner. Um, like I say, then once I'm tipped, he sent me. Uh, I'm reloading on Tuesday morning from Alicante, which is 500 and something miles away. So I need to get three hours to be safe. I need to get three hours down the road after tipping tomorrow night. So if I can get in there any earlier and do three hours down the road, that'll have, that'll have cracked it and mean that I can start Monday morning, run the 400 miles to my um, reload point, ready for loading first thing Tuesday morning. So, fingers crossed, it all sort of works good. So, uh, we're just going under. One of the gantries there, look, that picks up your toll automatically. Anyway, as I say, um, an hour and a quarter left to run and uh, I'll probably call on it, but I'll show you when we park up anyway, so... Uh, beautiful now. Lovely, dry, clear day. Nice scenery. Still only eight degrees, so it's, uh, it's fairly chilly outside. I was just talking to one of the lads at home. He says it's 11 degrees. But there's the road stretching out in front of us, and up in the distance you can see it curving up over the hills, that's where we're headed. We've just come through a uh, tunnel and uh, into this valley, look at that. The colour of the mountains is like blues, it's incredible. Brilliant colours. Beautiful roads. Right, got myself into the services here. I've got uh, 18 minutes left on this four and a half hour shift, so it's not worth pushing it. Um, looking on the uh, sat nav, there's nothing now for, I think I think the next services was about 50 k's, which is 30 miles, so there's no way I'd do that. But uh, this one looks okay, I can get food. I've got, I've got food anyway, but um, I'm only here for a 24 and I've got 99 miles to go to my destination, so two hours tomorrow.
but um, this means that I can set out an hour early without having to run a 10 hour today. So I think that's what I'll do.